And that's not me saying that. It's what the American strategists are saying, including one called John Williams, which is, who's known. He says we should expect a systematic collapse, a hyperinflation, and a Great Depression in the U.S. It is not, not a choice. No country is forced to be part of the globalization. And we are moving from globalization to internationalization okay, again, which means having international relations rather than global relations. On the G20 summits, nice parties. And I have read and studied and watched every one of them and have not seen a single recommendation implemented or implementable except the one on increasing the capital of the IMF bank so that it continues to pump money. The G20 meeting is a social gathering and it's not what it could and should be. Mr. Geithner's reforms, the Minister of Finance of the United States of America. Mr. Geithner developed a progress of reform based on a number of tests, some 10 tests, including one which he called a disciplined economy. And unless and until, until the United States of America does that, the United States of America is not going to be out of the crisis. It is a structural problem. Unfortunately, no president can do that. And we know that at least three presidents lost their second term because they tried to reform the economy in the United States of America. So Obama does not have an easy job. On government budget deficits, we are in a very fragile world with governments of the leading countries of the world technically bankrupt. When you have a deficit in your budget, a deficit in your trade, a deficit in your balance of account, a deficit in everything, you are technically bankrupt. In my former life, I was an accountant. I'm still the account that's the chairman of the Arab CPA Association. By definition, if the government is unable to provide the services needed by the people, that government is bankrupt. And we are seeing what is happening today in France. I predicted this a year ago, and I said in September, or before end of December, we are going to see in France what we saw in, in Greece. And I say that in the next year we are going to see it in most of countries of Europe. Because of the reforms that are basically targeted at taking away the privileges from the people. The inter-European sovereign loans. Most of the European countries are lenders to each other, and it's a mesh. If you look at one of the charts that were made, every European country is a borrower and a lender at the same time, and a borrower and a lender from defaulting countries. So we have a very uncomfortable situation in Europe. Are we going to have hyperinflation or deflation? Economists differ. And they always do. Franklin Roosevelt said once, try to find me a single-handed economist. Because economists always tell you on one hand, but on the other. They never give you a straight solution. So whether you're heading for a, an inflation, hyperinflation, or to a deflation, which is more serious than inflation, I don't think, I, I cannot predict. Wealth. According to strategic reports I read in the U.S. by very reputable study centers, wealth is moving from the north to the south and from the west to the east. Don't feel bad about it. That's the, that's the path of history. It has always been that way. But if you're clever, and I'm sure here in this room everybody is clever, you should follow the direction of wealth and not just feel miserable or bad or sad about it or feeling unfair. Just move where the wealth is moving. Buffett said, I know you know, I'm sure you all know Warren Buffett, the wealthiest man in the world. He said, it is wrong to expect the experts 
who created the mess to provide the remedies. To provide the remedies. And this is actually why the U.S. is in a mess. Because the same creativity of the financial market that created the, 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 the derivatives problem, and they called it the genius, they called the derivatives invention the genius of the financial market. And if you just want to know a new term that has had to be coined, we started with a million, a billion, a trillion, now we have a quadrillion. And the total value of the derivatives, which are the toxic documents, the toxic papers in the, in the financial market, is half a quadrillion. Not according to me, according to Bank of International Settlement, which is one of the agencies of the World Bank. 500 trillion papers worth nothing. They are swaps and derivatives. On the WTO, unfortunately, the WTO is not able to, to continue its process. In fact, WTO has been in dormant, if I don't use a worse word, has been dormant for many years. Since the Doha round, which is more than seven years ago, not a single new treaty has been reached. And nothing of the built-in agenda, nor of the previous decisions, have been implemented. On the dollar, when the president of the IMF calls for the need for a new reserve currency, a new reserve currency, other than the dollar, he wouldn't make such a statement without clearance with the U.S. In fact, we have heard many statements from the U.S., different experts calling for this and saying this is in the interest of the U.S. itself to have something like the special drawing rights, the SDRs, as the reserve currency and not to continue to be under one reserve currency. We are in a recession. But there are blessings in the recession. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I gave a speech on the blessings of a recession. During a recession, there is time to think. There is time to restructure. There is time to redirect the resources. There is time to do things which you could not do in a, in a period of, of bloom, of... Uh, of uh, prosperity. I know that some bankers here, and I want to apologize to you, but I only want to quote President Thomas Jefferson so that we can learn from his wisdom. Quarter of a million ago, 2050 years ago, he said, banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. That means that we have to think of reforming the banking institutions. The genius of the financial market I spoke about, insurance betting guarantees, insurance betting documents were called or named as swaps. Even President Bush, who is not a great genius, especially in finance, was able to talk about swaps. And he did not know that swaps are basically and nothing more than betting on bad insurance risks. Risking, risk gambling wagers were renamed derivatives as well. Joseph Spitz of Columbia University, who is a Nobel Prize winner, said, we need a global recovery for a global recession. We need a global recovery for a global recession. Wrong.